Hey there, Commanders. This week's community goal comes highly recommended. FDev is providing, or I should say Brewer, is providing overcharged power plants. These will be overcharged beyond what a grade 5 blueprint can normally provide. The Colonia guys are getting a little bit left out of the party here. They are only going to be able to earn a 3A power plant. That's a huge oversight and a bit of a slight on FDev's part because the Colonia guys are going to feel a lot of pressure to fly all the way to the bubble to participate in the opposite end of the goal. So I think you might find the Colonia initiative struggling to keep up as well as the uh, Alcor initiative, which awards a 3A, a 4A, and a 5A pre-engineered overcharged power plant. In addition to some minor livery of awards that just not many people myself including actually really care all that much about you get a what is it a brewer corporation sticker and the top 75 percent of oh and an exploration decal so brewer sticker exploration decal and maybe one or two other little baubles that don't matter anywhere near as much as the power plants power plants the reason why you want this Overcharged power plants can resolve power headroom constraints on a lot of the smaller ships. They give you a ton of headroom to play with really high power draw modules like plasma accelerators and railguns. However, overcharged power plants reduce module integrity, making them extremely vulnerable to incoming railgun or module damage in general. So you have to be really, really strategic about how you deploy these power plants because if you're using an overcharged plant, you are committing to build a hard shield tank. And that means that you can only really do this effectively on ships that lend themselves well to aggressive shield tanking. Understand too that overcharged means more heat. So you're going to want ships that have high heat capacity. This means some of the larger small ships and some of the medium ships if you can. Now I'm gonna go over exactly what's available. Unfortunately, there is a lot of strategy to what FDEV's doing with selecting these three power plants because the most popular combat ships in the game, in the medium and large categories, do not use them. So this is going to apply mostly to small combat ships, to several cargo ships, and to a couple of exploration ships. This is really not going to do a lot to affect the combat meta, with one significant exception that I'm going to get to here in a second. Um, I think we're looking at uh, top 75% has already hit a range of 2,161 to 4,500 tons of cargo. So for safe bet, I would recommend shooting for 3,000 total units of contribution. And it doesn't matter what the available commodities you deliver as long as you deliver 3,000 units. Now, with events like these, Inara can sometimes reflect what's going on a little unpredictably. Keep an eye on this page, watch it refresh. Um, once you hit 3,000 units, maybe you know just passively check it once a day and make sure you're still on track. I kind of doubt we'll see top 75 exceed 3,000 units. Uh, the larger the spread, the more uh, the samples get smeared out across a larger area, the lower the averages end up becoming. So um, 2,161 to 4,500 units is probably where this is going to, it's probably gonna climb into the 2,500s by the end of the week, so just uh, be aware of that. 3,000 is a nice, safe, round number to shoot for. Um, let me see here. I'm not gonna try to get too far into the, the trade routes because that can be a little bit tedious, but uh, Inara is once again a really good place to go. Look at best exports. If you have a fleet carrier, you can basically just start working your way down this list in the Galaxy map. Look for systems that have open orbital slots near stations with high quantity values. So you'll see here auto fabricators is one of the target goods to deliver. Uh, Stillman Hub has the highest quantity. I would expect to see a lot of carriers parked in that system unloading it because the refresh rate is now. That means that someone seconds ago with a third-party tracking tool docked at that station and it refreshed the database. For updated items to reflect now, you have to remember that, that not very many commanders are actually running the reporting tools that NR uses. So for every one commander that you see reporting, you can assume that there's, in community goal situations, two or three other commanders who are probably docked in multiple instances at the same time. That being said, it will take a long time to chew through this much uh, supply. The major limiting factor is going to be parking spaces for a fleet carrier. For optimum use, you want to be parked as close as you can to the station and just go back and forth, back and forth as, you know, as rapidly as you can manage. 
This is going to be a community event where the CG system gets loaded the F up. So be prepared to do uh, moderate jumps in order to unload at your target station. A Type 9 or an Imperial Cutter comes highly recommended here. And do this in solo play. If you're just trying to grind out your commodities, I don't recommend trying to do this in open play. It's going to be an absolute zoo. Um, you might even get, well, you'll probably get blown up because these uh, these types of events attract people that uh, like to blow you up for the low cows. So uh, let's see. Similar story with resonating separators, except that in this case, the highest, holy crap, the highest quantity station is an outpost. So uh, 1.8 million units, but remember, outposts, only have medium pads. This is a, a poison pill. I d skip these over. The best you can hope for unloading uh, uh, from an outpost is your Python with all the internals dedicated to cargo space and you get just shy of like 300 units of capacity per run. A type nine gives you like 750 to 800. Don't bother with outposts for unloading unless you're desperate. Stillman hub, flag dock, horde orbital, just work your way down the list, look for systems where there are open orbital slots around the station that has the thing you're looking for. Uh, microcontrollers, you know, we got another outpost floating up here. These are running a little bit tighter in terms of quantity. Charlo City and then Lundwell City. Um, just pick a system and, uh, and get going. Now, in terms of effects, overcharged power plants. I've gone ahead and filtered by the ships that are affected directly by this power plant type. So um, if you're going for the size 5 power plant, remember power plants can be undersized in other platforms. Um, the Asp Explorer, the Orca, and the Type 7 Transporter are the only ships that have a size 5 power plant optional. They can take smaller if necessary, and I strongly suspect we'll see a lot of people using the smaller power plants in these larger ships. But a size 5 overcharged power plant can also be used on larger vessels. So you go all the way down here to these size 6s, things like the well, you've got your Alliance combat ships, you've got your Beluga Liner, your Federal Assault ship. Uh, Beluga Liner is a reasonably popular exploration ship. This overcharged power plant is likely to produce the same amount of power, if not a little bit more than the size 6. So you'll see explorers especially um, swap out their large explorer ships with smaller power plants like these in order to uh, get weight gain, uh, weight improvements. That does come at the cost of heat efficiency. So if you do this to one of your exploration ships, um, you'll want to be really careful scooping around stars because you'll cook like a mother. It's not even funny. And it overcharged, overcharged reactors produce even more heat than, than they normally would. And with this hyper-engineered overcharged reactor, I would expect that the negatives are going to scale as aggressively as the positives do. So we're looking at a overcharged reactor that will be especially fragile the module integrity will basically be tissue paper, and it's going to produce a ton of heat, but it's going to be relatively light for a unit of power, and it's going to produce a ton of power for what it is. So we're, we're probably going to see these size 5 power plants make their way into much larger ships. I seriously doubt it will affect any of the combat ships because armored reactors are just so popular, with the exception of, well, no, the Imperial Cutter is going to go for... Yeah, size 8 will still produce more power than an overcharged size 5, unless FDEV gets really ridiculous with this. And I really hope that they don't, because these exotic modules are going to start causing problems with engineering balance at some point. FDEV is trading short-term gains for long-term issues. Um, power creep is the word of the day here, ladies and gentlemen. You are going to want to watch for it, because the more of these exotic modules get out in the wind, the less relevant engineering becomes. This may be part of a secret plan to destroy the engineering system over time with, well, I don't know, even more powerful stuff. Not a good move. I worry about these modules eventually becoming so prolific that you lose any incentive to engage with the engineering system. Um, and because they're so restrictive in the way they hand these things out, that you're going to end up going up against players with massive tactical advantages over you. This was fine with frame shift drives because... They're frame shift drives, and the only thing that changed was travel time. Now we're getting into stuff that starts affecting combat in a significant way. They did this with shield generators a while back, and I had the same problem there. If you're in a small ship, the uh, engineered 3A shield generators they were handing out for things like the Imperial Courier now give you a market advantage over anyone else, over anything that you can get in the engineering system. 
So you're giving players a leg up that cannot be accommodated for, and I, I'm concerned it will eventually ruin the balance. But that's neither here nor there this week. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get back on topic here. These are all the ships that use the size 4 power plant. You'll note we've got the Vulture, the Viper Mark IV, which nobody really gives a damn about, the Imperial Courier, so, and the Imperial Courier is a prolific shield tank, so this size 4 power plant is going to be a big deal. However, if you're going to use overcharged reactors with PAs and railguns, understand that you are probably going to fry. Trade-offs are a bit of a nasty thing to overcome in this game. Um, so you'll definitely want to have a heat sink on this baby or some other way to deal with the heat. Thermal vent beam lasers can potentially be helpful. Uh, Dolphin nobody cares about. Diamondback Scout will definitely not apply this reactor well since most people who use that ship run it as a stealth ship and overcharged reactors do not play nice on stealth builds. A Diamondback Explorer. So now let's see, I've done a couple of those. The power constraint issue that I run into is because I favor the low emissions reactor for fuel scoop efficiency. So as an explorer, the Diamondback is probably not going to apply the size 4 reactor or, or the size 3 for that matter, since the heat problem still remains uh, a pretty big deal. Although it's a good way to shave weight if you want to focus on jump range over scoop efficiency. Cobra 4, which basically nobody has, and the Cobra 3, which is a really good combat ship if you understand how uh, to leverage FA off and keep your cross-section minimized. Uh, they could apply this reasonably well. It's a good multi-role small ship too, and then the Asp Scout, which uh, nobody gives a damn about. Both of, but when I say that, it's not like I'm trying to disparage the people who design these ships. I'm just pointing out that the way that the game is currently balanced the Diamondback Scout and the Asp Scout just don't really have a place in the, the grand scheme of things. You can cheese together something that doesn't immediately die when you take it into combat, but you're just not as practical in most situations as other vessels on this list. The Vulture is going is the most interesting thing here. I've built a, I've got three Vultures in my fleet carrier hangar, and all of them I've had to make sacrifices for power constraints, but none of them are shield. Well, one of them can be used as a shield tank. So I'm going to be kind of curious to see what happens here because the Vulture, the Vulture's biggest problem is, well, it's not just power constraints, it's capacitor constraints too. I'm going to have to play with this once I see what the final figures are because if they're high enough, um, then, then this overcharged reactor is going to provide for some interesting gameplay on that front. Uh, let's see. These are all of the ships that use size 3 power plants. The pool isn't very big. We've got a Type 6 transporter in here, which can be a good exploration ship. Um, it's somewhat effective in that role. You can get it over 50 light years of jump range without too much trouble with engineering. Uh, and then we've got the Imp Eagle and the Adder, which nobody uses except as a travel ship. So actually for travel ship, app uh, travel ship applications, a size 2 power plant is probably still going to be better because you're not trying to fight anybody, and I don't know of anyone who builds shield tank adders. It's not a ship that you can readily make open safe. Most people who use it just use it to travel between destinations until they've got a diamond back, which can jump even farther. Viper, however, is a pretty strong combat ship to play with. It's probably, well, yeah, I, I, I think the Viper is better than the Cobra 3 for small chassis, small pad ships. Now, the Viper, I'll, I'll give you a, a differentiator there. A Vulture is a large chassis, small pad ship. It's pretty damn big for its size. The Viper, however, is squat, it's tiny, it's cross section, even with the full dorsal hull exposed to you is really small you get more than two or three kilometers away from somebody shooting at you and you become you know just a couple of pixels wide dot to try to center on target um and that's one of the viper's biggest most powerful strengths to be used and applied to its fullest extent so um, an overcharged reactor on this ship paired with dirty drives is going to be fast but again you're going to be running really hot it will you're trading power constraint for the ability to cook yourself pretty effectively every time you fire a Pierre or a railgun. So it's going to be kind of a toss-up as to what works best here. In any case, um, I think that's all I've got for today. I've covered all the strong bases. Uh, yeah, I will catch you guys later.